the officials took Esther to go and see the scrolls, and when they opened the door at this musty Michelle synagogue that nobody had been in in many years, he was stunned. From the door to the synagogue, he could look inside and see that there were Torah stacked literally from floor to ceiling. Uh, it was obvious in the doorway that, uh, that the scrolls were damaged, uh, but there were, he thought, hundreds or thousands of them in front of him. The Czechs told Eric that uh, they'd like to sell the scrolls, but they emphasized that the buyer needed to buy all of them together, and just buy one or two of them. So Eric, of course, didn't have that kind of money. He went back to London, and there, uh, other prominent Jews decided to help him. Uh, one philanthropist in particular supplied the funds and donated the scrolls to Westminster Synagogue, a big synagogue in London, where the Czech Memorial Scroll Trust was created for the care of the scrolls. Well, let me thank our rabbis for asking me to do this. I'm very close to our Holocaust Torah. Not only because I was the first one in our congregation to have the privilege of touching it, I'll talk, I'll talk to you about a minute about that, but also because uh, we received it in February of 1979, and in the high holidays uh, in September or October of 1979, six of the founding members of our congregation, none of whom had ever read Hebrew before, were taught by our first rabbi to read Hebrew, and on the high holidays we read from our Holocaust story. My son read from the Holocaust Torah when he was part of my and my granddaughter read from it a couple of years ago when she was part of my So the Holocaust Torah means a great deal to me, and I and all of us need to thank and be so grateful to the six curators of the museum in Prague who managed to hoodwink the Nazis into allowing them to keep these tours. You see, much to my surprise, I thought the Nazis, when they overran countries and took possession of Jewish artifacts, would just destroy them, stomp on them, tear them to earth. That was not the truth. Much to my surprise, the Nazis, while they really didn't take a lot of care of those things, they shoved them in warehouses and as uh, Rabbi Benji said, when they opened the door, they'd been there for months and years, and the musty smell and so forth, wind, snow, water, damn. Uh, six curators managed to hoodwink them into suggesting that they would do the work for them, they would keep these things so when the war was over, they would be intact to go to these museums. Four of those curators perished in the Holocaust, uh, two survived. And Westminster Synagogue, obviously, uh, restored the Torahs. What Rabbi Benji didn't tell you is that Rabbi Harold Reinhardt, who was the rabbi at Westminster at the time, uh, was uh, born in Portland, Oregon, was American at that time, uh, graduated from the Hebrew Union College, the same college that our rabbis graduated from, I believe uh, Westminster builds itself as a um, modern synagogue. Uh, I couldn't find it in the UHC, but Rabbi Benji told me last night that it may be a new progressive Judaism. Uh, so what's interesting is that here we have a reformed congregation, just like Beshalom, that undertook to restore almost 1,600 Holocaust Torahs. The uh, uh, Torah, was written, at, at least, uh, so I, I believe, I can't locate it. They say somewhere uh, around here, but my belief is that the information we got said this Torah was written in 1803 in Prague, Czechoslovakia, and was used in the Pinkus Synagogue at that time. Uh, you might recall the coincidence that Ohio became the state in the United States in that same year, 1803. Uh, the Torah came with a yellow tag uh, attached to one of the spindles. A yellow tag with, with black ink in which was written in hand in German and in Czechoslovakia. This is the Bible of the Jew. 
I have no idea who put that on, whether the Nazis put it on, whether the curators put it on, or whether it was put on in the Westminster Synagogue. Uh, the, um, if, the, if the Torah was, if this Torah was started to be used in 1803 in the Pinkus Synagogue, it was used there until early 1939 when the Germans overran Prague. So it served for about 140 years as one of the, not, probably not the only, but one of the principal Torahs in the Prague Synagogue. We've had it for 34 years. The difference in time is the time it's spent in, well, it probably would consider purgatory. I'm not sure that's a Jewish term, but. <laughs> and the, uh, what, what I think we need to remember is that when the Torah was written, it was intended to be used in worship services, to be read every Shabbat, to be read at every holiday, and so forth. And except for the time that it was sitting in this German warehouse and the sh much shorter time that it took to restore it, it has been and continues to be used for that purpose. That should give all of us some bit of inspiration.
chills to know that they are dedicating, um, they, they are dedicating after uh, this many years, <coughs> those Torah scrolls that were found, preserved for us, and allowed us in, in, a, in a very important way to remember and also to maintain um, uh, our connection with our tradition. You'll notice that there are a couple of stains here, and we don't know exactly where the stains came from. But we, um, we maintain those, those little marks that tell us that um, they were unclean, that were left the way they were, just to recall the, the fact that this is a, a Torah that was used heartily, and, uh, but was maintained in its uh, more or less current condition.